Good morning, everybody. I want to ask you to turn to Psalm 73. Psalm 73. I appreciate uh, so much those kind words, uh, Josh, very much. I think so much of you and Phil, and uh, I know other, uh, some other ministers here on this staff, and know, know some of you. And I bring you greetings from Harding School of Theology in Memphis, Tennessee. You don't have to live very long before you learn that life can be very hard and sometimes really hard to understand. You notice that? I grew up in southeast Dallas in the old Pleasant Grove area. And uh, I had a brother and sister, mom, dad. And every Sunday morning, we, we were in the car to go to church. We knew how long it took. We had it timed, Bible class first. We were going to get there just before it began. And I remember, though, and I was a little guy, I remember one Sunday, we were backing out of our driveway and going down Alhambra Street. All the houses kind of looked the same, these small, mostly red brick houses. Going down the street, and our neighbor was backing a boat into the street. I'm a little guy, and I kind of thought everybody went to church on Sunday morning. But they got a boat in the street. We couldn't go past them to go to church. There's a boat in the street. And I'm just looking at that, and I'm thinking, where are they going? Well, sure enough, they were going to Lake Ray Hubbard outside of Dallas. That boat was about to leave, about to be pulled to the lake. And I remember just looking at that. Didn't seem like it was too long, too much later that our neighbor, let me see, coming out our front door, about two houses down, they had this Cadillac convertible. I remember that because we only had one Cadillac on that street. It was theirs. And it was a convertible, and the top was already down on a Sunday morning. Golf clubs are in the back seat. You could see them standing up. And out came their daddy, and he the cigarette, the cigar smoke was just, you see it, he was on his way to the car. I remember thinking as a little guy, he's about to play golf. That's a long time ago. You say, that's another culture. That's where everybody was in church. I, I, I hear that and I understand that. But you see, I had this question, even as a little guy, I kind of thought that if you lived right, things pretty well went well for your life, you know, here, here on earth. And I thought if you, if, you, if you lived wrong, you better watch out, because things are going to go wrong on this earth. Now, the, the little stories I told about the boat and the golf clubs, that may seem like long ago and far away, but the questions are not long ago and far away. We still wonder that. In Psalm 73, I think we find out that those questions are actually pretty old. What I'd like to do is just read a portion of this for a moment. I'd like to leave you with some encouragement. In just a few minutes, you'll have, you'll have a takeaway. But look at this, look at this tension first. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. 
They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They're free from common human burdens. They're not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. And they say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. Notice the line in verse 2. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I don't know a lot of you, but let me tell you what I do know. I do know that there is a woman here who is very discouraged. And I know that there is a daddy here who is pretty discouraged. And I know that there is a person much, 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 much younger than me who is finding school very difficult. And this writer says, you know, I just about gave it up. You ever get up on a Sunday morning and think, why should I even go? What's the use? Sometimes life can be hard, sometimes it can be very hard, and it can be hard to understand. Sometimes life can be pretty challenging because of tension in relationships. Tension in a marriage where you can sit on a pew and not want to touch each other. Tension in a family where last night you just had a fuss. Tension in what used to be a great friendship. Sometimes just thinking about Thanksgiving this week, you know who will be there, your old brother-in-law. Oh, mercy. The one that just goes on and on and on part of your family, you'll be there. You think, good grief, is it supposed to be this way? Tension in relationships, sometimes it's just disappointing, life is. You just had these hopes and dreams of what your life would look like, and it just hasn't worked. You got passed over for the last, the last time that the opportunity for a promotion came, and it just doesn't seem fair at all. Some of us look at our calendar, and it seems to be full of doctor's appointments. And on it goes. Sometimes life is hard, sometimes it's very hard, and sometimes it's hard to understand. This writer says, I almost gave up, my feet almost slipped. He couldn't figure out, why is it that people who have no regard for God at all just seem to be doing so well? You ever wonder that? You see these people and they just seem to pay no attention to God at all and they get a new contract and they're making more money than ever. They're living in a house not like yours. I mean the, big, the, the really nice house. And here you are in church. As a guy told me one time, it seems like that ought to count for something. It seems like that ought to, you know, matter. And I, I know what he means. But the, the psalmist is taking us in a different direction. The psalmist says in verse 13, Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I've been afflicted 
And every morning brings new punishments. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure. I mean, the way we say it, what's the use? Or I grew up in Texas, we'd say, what's the stinking use? What is the use? I mean, why try? Why, Why try to do right? Why try to live right? The thanks I get. Surely in vain, I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. He said, I tried to understand all this, verse 16, and it troubled me deeply. Till I entered the sanctuary of God. And then I understood their final destiny. We were in that church building, that old Pleasant Grove Church of Christ church building. And I remember one Sunday morning, my mother and I were walking down the hall of the education building. You know, we built the auditorium first. Years later, you build on the education building. That's what they did. There were two two boys, middle school boys, down the hall, a little bit ahead of us. Just behind them was that girl on the crutches. She went to our church. She had these braces that started, seemed to start at her ankles. and I don't know how high they went, but they just seemed to have covered her legs, these braces. And she walked on these crutches, and she, seemed to be, she just seemed to wobble a lot. I kind of had the feeling she could easily be pushed over or knocked over. And they were right in front of us, she and her mother and daddy, right in front of us, the two middle school boys in front of them, my mom and I in the back, two middle school boys. They're just, you know, like we'd say today, they're good kids. And they're just, but they're just, you know, just goofing around and looking at one another. And they get near the doors, the one leading to the outside, the glass doors. They open them. And then they start laughing at something, and then they let those doors slam on that little girl, and it knocked her back, and she almost fell, and I think her dad caught her. My mama didn't grouse a lot at church, but that morning I remember hearing her say something like this, those boys burned her up that that little girl was almost knocked over because of their carelessness. Sometimes it seems like you just get the door slammed in your face a lot. One thing, it's not any big thing, but one thing after the other. And this writer says, what's the use? And it was, it was oppressive trying to understand this. And then he said... He entered the sanctuary of God. He entered the sanctuary of God. And he understood, verse 17, their final destiny. Surely, verse 18, you place them on slippery ground, you cast them down to ruin. I've worn contacts or glasses most of my life. If I were to take them off, you would be a blur. The truth is, we don't see very well until we see life through the eyes of the living God. And he says, once I begin to look at the world, once I begin to look at life and people through the eyes of God, from the perspective of God, then I understood. I understood that I needed to look at people from an eternal perspective, not limited to today. And he says, you know, verse 22, I was senseless and ignorant talking to God. I was a brute beast before you. It's like he hit himself in the head and said, I can't believe I've been thinking this way. I'm going to wrap this up with verse 23 through 28. 
And I want to tell you, these verses have been some of the most encouraging verses to me. And I read them regularly. And what he does is this writer reminds us, not only do we need to see people in life through the eyes of God and the perspective of God, you and I need to know that God has given us some gifts that will help us get through our day. Let's start, I want to ask you to look at your Bible if you would. Verse 23. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge, and I will tell of all your deeds. I'm telling you, if, if you are the least bit discouraged this morning, these are four precious gifts from God. Number one, look at verse 23. God gives us security. I am always with you. I am always with you. I am with you when you go to school. I am with you when you go to OC. I am with you when you go to work. I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. You are not doing this on your own. You all ever... Maybe I'm the only one in here like this. Are you, do you all ever wake up at 3 in the morning and your worries begin to dance in front of your eyes? I got a meeting they set the, that afternoon and I'm thinking, what am I going to say? I'm laying there in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking, I got a doctor's appointment. What if it doesn't turn out very... What am I going to do? What am I going to say? I've got that conversation. How are we going to get out of this problem? Do you all ever... Does that ever happen to you at 3 o'clock in the morning? It does me. In fact, not long ago, these, these worries, these scary worries are just one after the other, and then it dawned on me, I need to be thinking about God being with me. And I began to pray, Lord, I know you are with me. I pray that I will believe that. The good news this morning is that God is with you us. God is with me. God is with you. There is security with our God. Isn't that good news? Here's a second one. You guide me with your, I'm sorry, you hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. God gives us direction. Everybody who's in, in high school or younger, life is not where you, you just, you're born and then it's up to you to kind of figure it out. God gives us direction. For years we lived in uh, Waco, Texas. I preached in Waco for 20 years. We, had, we have children here in Oklahoma City and so periodically we were coming up 35 to Oklahoma City. I knew how to get to their house. And then we moved to Memphis eight years ago. Now we're coming in on 40. So the first time that we, we came on 40, uh, I put their 
address into my phone. This woman begins to speak, and, and she says, she's telling us what to do. And I remember we're on, we're on somewhere here in the city, and she says, exit, next right. Well, that's not the exit. I, I mean, I know that much, because they live on the other side of the city. Or they did then. And so, you know, your phone's telling you things to do, and so, but I knew that wasn't right, and so I just ignored it. This person would not give up. I kept going, and she says, exit, next right, and turn around. Well, that's not going to help. And so I ignored her again, and we, Charlotte and I kept driving, and she kept talking, and exit, and go back, and I just finally turned her off. That's silly. I, t I use my phone all the time to get places. But it, it's not always right. And it doesn't always tell me the best route. Not always. Let me tell you some good news this morning about our God. He has never made a mistake with you. Never. And in terms of his direction and his leading and his guiding, he is just right. God gives us security. God gives us direction. Look at the third one. God gives us destiny. Afterward, you will take me into your glory. Destiny. I don't know what my life will be like in five years or ten years. But I do know what my eternity looks like. Because it is a gift from the cross of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension on high as Lord. Claiming me as His son or daughter. In my baptism, I came up out of that water. And the action God took was through the cross of Christ. But it was applied to me and you. My destiny is good. Your destiny is good. And then finally, God gives us strength. Verse 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My mama, I, she and I, I made it hard for her sometimes when I was little. I realize that now. I wish I could get a do-over, but that's the way it was. And I remember one time, she and I had gone around and around. I was a little guy, and I heard her go in the next room. And you know what she said? Dear Lord, give me strength. I didn't know my, I often provoked my mother to such prayers. Um, that's a pretty good prayer. Because God does give us strength. Here's what you leave with this morning. God gives you security. God gives you direction. God gives you destiny. God gives you strength. And about the time you and I are ready to give up, about the time our feet had almost slipped, we remember that God has given us these gifts. A word of encouragement this morning. Please do not give up. Don't give up. God's gifts, God's presence is enough. And God has given us a hope through Jesus Christ that will take us on to the end our hope knows no defeat. None at all. None at all. And it doesn't matter how hard it is right now. Defeat is not where we're going. We're on our way to living with Him forevermore. And it's not up to us. He is with us all the way.
We're going to sing for a moment. If you'd like the prayers of this gathering, what an appropriate time to ask for prayer. But I want you to know this morning, God's hope is greater than our most difficult problem. And God's hope, gifted to us in Christ, knows no defeat at all, and we hang on to that this morning. Let's stand and sing.